For this video, we're going to be talking about Sandbox's C Sharp implementation. You can see here that dev blog number two goes over C Sharp. This is where I'm getting my information. This was posted by Gary Newman and this summarizes how we're using C Sharp in Sandbox. The first headline or heading in this blog post is goals and it states coding in C or C++ isn't enjoyable for us. Unreal Engine doesn't make that any more enjoyable. So the goals are simple. Load new code at runtime, hot load code while playing, easy to learn and use, reduce coding ballocks. I, I think I pronounced that right. I had to actually Google that. It means nuisances. End user never touches C++, Unreal Engine, or any other SDK. Then the blog goes over the sandbox specific C Sharp implementation that will be at our disposal if we ever get our hands on sandbox. It goes over network functions, RPCs, network variables, replicate, and async, asynchronous functions. And I'll go a little bit into detail about what each of these means. Remote procedure calls. You might be wondering what the heck's a remote procedure call. Uh, well, it can be abbreviated as RPC. And RPC is when a software causes a procedure to execute in a different address space as if it were a local procedure call without having to explicitly program the details for the remote interaction. In our case, it's essentially a very simple and easy way to write gameplay netcode. So how do we use RPCs? Well, Facepunch has provided us with method attributes to make RPCs a whole lot easier. In C Sharp, in code, attributes are defined above methods or fields. Attributes can be used for a variety of reasons, and in our case, they will be used to define RPCs. Methods which are targeted by the client attribute will execute on the client, and methods which are targeted by the server attribute will execute on the server, and methods which are targeted by the multicast attribute will execute on all clients in the server. All we have to do is target a method with an RPC attribute, execute the method, and all of the difficult networking code is handled for us. This is essentially Gmod's client-server shared architecture handled in a much different manner. And it is easy to use. This might seem confusing at first, but it's not that difficult. Replicate is another network-based attribute that Facepunch will provide to us for Sandbox. However, this attribute does not target functions, it targets fields. Its sole purpose is to synchronize values from the server to the client. It acts in a similar manner as RPCs, except all it does is change the value of its targeted field. The dev blog mentions that Replicate can target both value types and reference types, making it a powerful tool for game synchronization between clients and servers. Asynchronous functions. What is that? Asynchronous, by definition, means not simultaneous or concurrent in time. In software talk, it means operations executing in parallel to each other. In our case, it means performing heavy operations parallel to the primary game thread with the intent to not interrupt the game's execution, resulting in a smooth frame rate. Say, for example, you want to load an asset during the middle of a game. Loading is typically a slow process that can interrupt gameplay. With asynchronous operations, we're able to load, load those assets parallel to gameplay, thus there is no immediate effect to our frame rate. As you can imagine, this sort of feature can be extremely useful for a sandbox type game. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first time I've made this sort of video with the fancy animations and whatnot. Depending on how things turn out, I plan to create more videos like this in the future regarding sandbox and its developments. So thanks for watching.